good afternoon dear students today we are going to discuss the production of vitamin b12 vitamin b12 is also called as actually it is named as cyanocobalamin or simply cobalamin vitamin b12 also called as cobalamin it is a water soluble vitamin and it pay, plays a key role a very important role in the normal functioning of the body okay uh, right from uh, proper digestion up to the brain nervous system working etc okay so it's it's uh, it plays a very uh, important role in the normal functioning of the brain and the nervous system and formation of even red blood cells okay it is involved in the metabolism of every cell of the human body especially affecting dna synthesis fatty acid and amino acid metabolism it is an important dietary component for normal growth in human beings and domesticated animals its daily requirement for human beings is 0.001 mg per day see it is synthesized only by microorganisms and not by animals okay not even by human beings and plants it is synthesized only by microorganisms okay now people who have b12 deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency may eventually develop pernicious anemia it is the largest and most structurally complicated vitamin and can be produced industrially only through bacterial fermentation synthesis process okay so it's a very complicated uh, structurally in uh, vitamin uh, it is a complicated uh, vitamin structurally and on industrial scale it can be produced only by the use of microorganisms uh, vitamin b12 entirely is produced on a commercial basis by fermentation it's usually manufactured by submerged culture process aerobically under submerged culture process aeration and agitation of the production medium is essential during production such a fermentation process may be completed within 3 to 5 days most of the b12 fermentation processes require or use glucose as carbon source now let us discuss the production what are the different types of microbes which can produce vitamin b12 okay the microorganisms that may be employed in industrial production of vitamin b12 are actinomycetes like streptomyces griseus streptomyces olivaceus bacteria such as bacillus megatherium bacillus coagulans pseudomonas denitrificans propionibacterium species like propionibacterium shermani propionibacterium frudenrichi okay so these are the various microorganisms which can be used for vitamin b12 production now we are going to study here production of vitamin b12 by the use of microorganism streptomyces olivaceus it is an actinomycetes actinomycet now streptomyces olivaceus nrrl 1125 strain strain number nrrl 1125 is used for vitamin b12 production this strain has specific properties what are those it has the ability to peptidize casein it has the ability to liquefy gelatin it has the ability to reduce nitrates to nitrites and ability to hydrolyze starch the optimum temperature required for this microorganism is 25 degree celsius now the first step is preparation of inoculum how are we going to produce the inoculum in a simple like inoculum build up process we have studied in that way only so the pure slant culture of streptomyces olivaceus is inoculated in 100 to 250 ml of inoculum medium which is present in a uh, conical flask or in layer flask the seeded flask okay so inoculate pure culture of uh, uh, streptomyces olivaceus in 100 to 250 ml of uh, inoculum medium present in a linear flask this inoculated or seeded flask is incubated on a sh mechanical shaker to aerate the system okay on a platform of a mechanical shaker so shaking incubator in a shaking incubator we incubate the flask this flask culture is then subsequently used to inoculate larger inoculum tank 
like from here we transfer to 5 liter tank then to 10 or 100 liter and so on so this flask culture is subsequently used to inoculate larger tanks larger inoculum tank two to three successes successive transfers are made to obtain required amount of inoculum cultures okay so you go on successively transferring and develop in enough amount of inoculum broth culture now the media that is used for inoculum is called as bennett's agar this medium is supposed to be the be good or best medium for inoculum build up what are those what is the medium what does the medium contain yeast extract 1 gram per liter beef extract 1 gram per liter then enzymatic hydrolysate of casein enzymatic hydrolysate of casein okay which is 2 gram glucose 10 gram agar to solidify 15 gram distilled water and uh, dissolved in 1 liter distilled water the ph is adjusted to 7.3 this medium is used for inoculum buildup okay then once the inoculum buildup has been done success, uh, sufficient amount of inoculum is ready with us we have to transfer the inoculum into the production medium now what does the production medium consist of the production medium consists of carbohydrates proteinaceous material source of cobalt and other salts what is the composition of the production medium it contains 4 percent distillers soluble 0.5 to 1 percent dextrose 0.5 percent calcium carbonate cobalt chloride is present in 1.5 to 10 ppm the ph is adjusted to 7 now it is necessary to add cobalt to the medium for maximum yield to obtain maximum yield of cobalamin okay that's why cobalt is needed now cobalamin is to be con converted into cyanocobalamin so cyanide is added for conversion of cobalamins into vitamin b12 it can be added during the production or at the end of the fermentation also sterilization of the medium sterilization can be practiced in batch wise manner or in, using a continuous sterilizer in batch wise sterilization medium is heated at 250 degree fahrenheit for one hour required amount of medium is you you uh, required amount of medium is heated at 250 degree fahrenheit for an hour or in continuous sterilization medium is heated at 330 degree fahrenheit for 13 minutes by mixing with live steam okay the me as the medium comes in through the pipe it is a st live steam is injected into it and it is sterilized right so after sterilization the medium is filled in the production tank it is inoculated with the inoculum that has been developed the temperature a temperature of 80 degree fahrenheit in the production tank is satisfactory for production during fermentation so the temperature is maintained in the range of 80 degree fahrenheit the ph at the beginning of the pa uh, process ph falls why does the ph fall down due to rapid consumption of sugar in the first 24 hours of fermentation then the ph rises after two to four days because the mycelium undergo lysis okay initially the ph falls because of consumption of sugar in the first 24 hours the ph then rises after two to four days due to lysis of the mycelium the stabilization of ma mash is practiced by reducing the ph to about 5 uh, with h2so4 and reducing agent sodium sulfate okay so you have to stabilize the ph stabilize the mash by adding h2so4 when the ph rises we have to stabilize the ph by adding h2so4 uh, and the reducing agent na2so4 now aeration and agitation is important because process is aerobic so optimum rate of aeration is 0.5 volume of air per volume of medium per minute okay so optimum rate of aeration is 0.5 volume of air per volume of medium per minute a proper rate of aeration and agitation are essential for the growth of organism however higher aeration rates can cause foaming problem right so 
to control the foam we have to add anti foam agents during aeration the air that is passed into the medium should be sterilized okay so the air is first sterilized by passing through columns that are filled with activated charcoal and then it is passed into the medium so air is sterilized by passing through activated charcoal columns due to aeration foam develops so we have to add anti foam agents deforming agents like soybean oil corn oil lard oil and silicone compounds can be used to suppress foam formation particularly at the beginning of the process when the organisms are actively metabolizing and ag agitation and aeration is taking place okay so uh, we can use any vegetable oil like soybean oil or animal oil like lard oil okay or silicone compounds prevention of contamination prevention of contamination is very essential to maintain sterility till the end because contamination results in the reduced yield okay contamination with other bacteria can reduce the yield of vitamin b12 so we have to check the contamination hence all equipments all processes must be uh, all equipments must be sterile all transfer processes are to be carried out under aseptic conditions i can see here the flow chart so we have shown soybean meal distiller soluble sugar dextrose calcium carbonate cobalt chloride soybean oil as anti foam agent all these things are mixed in a definite quantity into a mixing tank whatever things are required are to be added to a mixing tank we add water to dilute it to a particular concentration okay the ph is initially 7 then it is all mixed after mixing through a pump it is passed through a steam sterilizer okay so steam sterilization unit is there it is passed to the steam sterilizer then through the heat exchanger to reduce the temperature okay and then it is passed into the main fermentation tank to the main fermentation we have to add anti foam agents okay separately because initially foam is developed and we have to add culture the inoculum 5% culture of streptomyces olivaceus into the main fermentation tank maintain the ph at 80 degree fahrenheit and 7 then when the ph rises we can reduce it to 5 by adding h2so4 okay and then carry out the fermentation with agitation aeration now once the fermentation is over after a period of 5 days through a beer pump then we have a holding tank then evaporator syrup tank drum dryers and finally you get vitamin b12 concentrates